things might be hard, but sometimes in this struggle, praise God, God is doing something in us. And hallelujah, we need to just stay right there and see what the blessing is. And you know, struggle means to be strenuous, be strenuous engaged with a problem or test, to have difficulty. Uh, it's, uh, it, it, it's hard when you have trying to uh, help uh, make an effort to do something. And even this morning I was saying, oh God, you know everything was just going this way and that way, but praise God. And it was hard trying to do what we normally do, praise God. It was a struggle in it, praise God. But see, so I have to know that there is a blessing in the struggle, amen. I don't know what, at some point in time, you have went through something in your life, but then when you came out at the end of it, praise God, then you saw the blessing of why you was going through that struggle. Amen? Praise God. So this is this is the thing. So God kept telling me, he said, well, tell them there's a blessing in the struggle. Because see, things get hard. Sometimes tasks get hard. Sometimes things get hard to go through. Sometimes it's hard to put one foot in front of the other foot. But one thing about it, hallelujah, and we just stay on track. Hallelujah. There is a blessing. Hallelujah. Somebody said there's a blessing for me. Me. In my struggle. In my struggle. Hallelujah. See, I just believe we're not we're not struggling for anything. Hallelujah. Praise God. See, we think just because when we get saved, hallelujah, we don't have anything to struggle. We don't have anything to go with. To, 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 to go through. Praise God. Amen. But when we struggle, when we when we get saved, hallelujah, the Bible says that it rains on the just and the unjust. So just like the world go through things, you go through it with Jesus. So you're going to have struggles. Things are going to get hard. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. Praise God. Because, you know, I think, God, that, hallelujah, that there are some blessings that God has waiting to release for us. Praise God. He just want to see, can he trust us in this struggle? Amen. Can he trust you in the struggle? Can he trust you? Are you going to look at what's going on? Because sometimes when we look at what's going on around us, we might say, God, I give up. Lord, I throw the towel in. Hallelujah. But if you but 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 in this struggle, if you just keep your eyes and keep pushing, I'll tell you what I have to do sometimes when when when, when I'm going through the struggle and things come to my mind, I have to keep speaking the word of God. I have to keep thinking on the word. I have to keep repeating the word to myself so that my heart will stay right so that I can continually to bless God. And then when the word keeps coming, hallelujah, then all of a sudden I begin to say, thank you, Jesus. Then I begin to praise and worship God. And then all of a sudden I forget about the struggle and I begin to say, okay, Lord, now I understand, hallelujah. It ain't about the struggle, it's still all about him. Praise God. Amen. Second, second Corinthians chapter four, it says, therefore, do not lose heart. Even though our outer man is perishing, yet the inner man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us for more exceedingly an eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So we can't, sometimes we can't look at the outward appearance and know what's going on. Sometimes we can't look, because see, this is the thing. God is doing a work on the inside. Praise God. Amen. God is doing something, and he's preparing something that, your, that, that these natural eyes can't see. Right. He's getting you ready for something, and you can't, it's not seen. And see, Paul said, these are but a light affliction. Praise God. Yes, God. But these trials are not just a test. They're vitally important to the process of putting on the divine nature. So you got to have that nature of Jesus. When Jesus was down here walking on the earth, Jesus went through some struggles. He had to walk through some things, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So it's important, important that we get that divine nature, that we know how to walk through this thing like Jesus did. If we handle these affections properly, they will consecrate us for our gain. Hallelujah. Amen. They'll consecrate you. They'll purify you. Amen. Hallelujah. When you go through trials and tests, and you, you come out, hallelujah, it's pure gold. 
Praise God. No pain that we suffer, no trial that we experience is wasted. No matter what you go through. Amen. No matter what you experience in life. Yes. No matter what you're going through, it will be a blessing to you, praise God. Amen. It will. That struggle will be a blessing to you in some form or some fashion. Amen. And that we suffer and we suffer in all that we endure, especially when we endure it patiently. Okay. It builds character. It purifies our hearts. It expands our souls. And it makes us tender and charitable. Right. You know, when you go through something, when you're going through the struggle, I have to say you're more careful what you say. You're more patient. <coughs> you be slow to speak. You watch your actions because you don't want to do anything. When you're in the struggle, you try to align, align yourself with God. You try to align yourself with heaven. So that's why when you're going through this struggle, it's going to bless you. Amen. It's through sorrow and suffering, toil and tribulation that we gain the education that we come here to acquire. That's why we're down here on this earth. It really ain't about all this. See, we get so caught up in our struggle here on earth, we forget about that the Bible tells us that we're just passing through this place. But this, but he, our home is heaven. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The Apostle Paul taught for our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, working for us a far more exceedingly and external way to glory. Now let me tell you something. It's interesting to me. You know that Paul was beaten. He was stoned. He was shipwrecked. Amen. He was in prison. And he went through all these things. He said they light afflictions. He said in light afflictions. Y'all know what bothers me sometimes? And, I, and you know, I don't know, and I, I don't ever want anybody to have, you know, this kind of experience with God. But sometimes, when people tell me things, you know, it's, not, it's sometimes it, it, it's as if I take that thing on myself. And it's like until I have to pray, and it's like that same affliction that they're going through. You know, I'm feeling it in my spirit. Amen. I'm feeling it when I'm waking up on my bed. It's like, God, you know, when, when the Bible talk about how David communed up on his bed, how the prophets laid up on their bed, and God brought things to them. You know what? I can lay in my bed, and God can bring somebody before me. And then I say, oh, God, but I can't think about my struggle. I can't think about what I'm going through, God, because I know what they got to endure, God. Yeah. But, Lord, whatever you're trying to do in that affliction, God, I got to intercede for them. I got to yeah. pray for them, Lord. I got to pray like it's my own life. Hallelujah. Jesus. Glory to God. Paul said it's a lot of fiction because, see, Paul, he was not fooled by this thing. It wasn't about Paul. Paul had a higher goal. He had a higher calling. He said he, he was sending his things. He said this is temporary, y'all. So you, we, we got to get our, our, really our mind on the kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise God. I doubt many of us, hallelujah, will lay by afflictions light. Hallelujah. Yet in comparison to the blessings and the growth we, utterly, uh, growth we utterly receive, both in life and in eternity. Hallelujah. Trust that God has a plan for your life. All right. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Do you believe he got a plan? Hallelujah. In the struggle, we forget the plan. Yes. Mm -hmm. In the struggle, we forget the vision. We do. In the struggle, we forget what God told us. That's right. You know, but this is a thing. While you're struggling, hallelujah, you got to yet, hallelujah, be speaking the word. You got to yet, hallelujah, have your mind. This is why when spiritual people, if you're spiritual mind and you're not a carnal mind Christian, you go to pray for somebody else. I heard uh, the Bible study was talking about the heart uh, on Thursday night. And, you know, some things touched me, even though I, I had heard it before. You know, but it was talking about how that we got to love our neighbor as ourselves. Right. But do we really love other people like we love ourselves? Because we're a selfish generation. We're so selfish. We don't want to love people like we love ourselves. We want to put ourselves first. Praise God. We, that's what we do. But as a Christian, hallelujah, you're supposed to love everybody. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. But trust that God has a plan for your life. Let me tell you, this is what happened to the children of Israel. They struggled 
to accept God's will and plan. That's why they struggle around that mountain. They struggle. They kept remembering what was familiar to them. You know, when we're going through something, when something is not comfortable for us, when something does not feel right to us, when it's not comfortable right. for us, then and, and, and it's a struggle for us. But I'm here to tell you this morning, you got to stay in the struggle. Right. You got to stay right there with God. And you got to let see where God, because there's a blessing in the struggle for you, praise God. Right. Amen. They wanted to be delivered, but they didn't want to go through the struggle. Amen. They kept going to Moses, and they kept saying, Moses, we don't have this. They kept saying, we don't have that. And they kept going to Moses until... Moses got himself messed up. Praise God. Yeah. That's why this is a thing. This is not a fleshly walk. This cannot be a carnal walk, but this got to be a spiritual walk. Yeah. This got to be a personal thing. You got to get a relationship with God. You got to walk in the spirit. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Exodus 20, verse 1 through 3 says, Exodus chapter 20. Hallelujah. We got to trust that God got a plan for your life. Glory. We can't trust in our plan. We can't trust, hallelujah, in what others are doing. But we got to ask God, God, what's your plan? Thank you, Lord. Exodus chapter 20, verse 1. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, who have brought you out the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage and thou shalt have no other gods before me. See, this is the thing. We get in the struggle for him. <laughs> and we forget about how God done brought us out. Yes. You know, we get to going through this right now struggle yes. and we forget how he delivered us back then out of Egypt and out yeah, of bondage. Yeah, Praise yeah. God. But see, in this struggle, what God wants you to do, he wants you to remember how he was your healer. Praise God. He wants you to remember how when you needed him back then, he came in right on time. Praise God. See, God, to me this morning, he's just telling me it's, it's, it's a blessing in this struggle. You know, and, and I don't mean to talk too much, but last uh, week, I, I thank God, hallelujah, I was, I, I was still, uh, had a project to do, and I wasn't feeling that great. Praise God. And uh, it was about 1 o'clock in the morning, and I, I was in so much pain. And, you know, I was sitting there, and I was still doing it. I said, God, you know, I know this got to get done. And, you know, it was to the point that I wanted to just break down, and I wanted to, you know, be in tears. But I said, Lord, just help me to hold on. Help me to hold it together in Jesus' name. And, you know, even then the next day, praise God, you know, and I, was so, I said, okay, Lord, it's a new day. It's a new day. I said, you know, I got to renew my mind. I got to get this thing. You know, I said, it's a struggle. Praise God. You know, I said, I thank you for healing. I thank you. You know, everything is going to be all right. Praise God. But God blessed the work of my hands. Praise God. He blessed the work of my hands. Sometimes in the struggle, we can't see it. Sometimes, but then when, it's, when, the, when we see the finished product of what you was in the struggle doing, and then I know, I said, well, God, I know that had to be you. Because I know where my mindset was. I know where my body was. I know it had to be God, hallelujah, that, that, that really anointed me to finish that product. Praise God. So I thank God for that. But see, we have to know that God is Lord of our life. Amen. See, I'm not Lord of my own life. God is Lord of my life. Glory. God wants to take, hallelujah, the supreme position in your life. Glory. Did you hear me? Amen. God want to take the supreme position in your life. Amen. You are, you cannot go through the struggle if you don't love God If you don't love God more than what you're doing, if you don't love God more than things, that's why when he brought them out, he told me, he said, you should have no other God before me. Don't let anything be more important to you than God. Glory. Amen. 
God is the Lord of your life. Amen. God is sovereign. He's over everything. He can do what he want to do. He told Moses, he said, I am who I am. He is the God that says you should have no other gods before me. God is he. God is who he is. He's God. He's God. Amen. God can do what he want to do. When he gets ready to do it. Amen. He can create blessings when he gets ready. Amen. He's waiting on us Amen. to speak into our struggle. Thank you, Lord. He is the creator of all things. I don't know about y'all, but I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel my help. He is the sustainer of life. Amen. He's your sustainer. Don't you ever forget it. Amen. God keeps you going in and he keeps yes. you going out. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Why do I struggle to let God be God? Amen. Come on, I'm trying to talk to somebody. Yes, Lord. Why do I struggle to let God be God? Amen. Y'all don't want to be God. Y'all want to tell God what you want. You want to tell him how you want it. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Whether you believe him or not, whether you obey him or not, whether you follow him or not, one thing about it, you can't ignore God. You can't. Amen. Some people love him and some people hate him. But when you crown him Lord of your life, you see things gonna get re get easier. Then you really see the reality of who God is. Amen. Cause let me tell you something. As old as I am, I don't never stop knowing God. Amen. I still have to say, God, come into my heart. I still have to say, God, you gotta be Lord over me. Amen. I still God say, God, you gotta be Lord over everything. Yes. Cause I can't. I can't do it. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So why? Are you struggling in your life to let God be God? Then he God done spoke things to you. You see things come to pass. You see a blessing here, a blessing there. But then, even myself, you want to see the full vision, the full fruition of it. And you and, and you saying, okay, so I'm, I'm like, God, okay, what is it in this struggle, hallelujah, that I need to do? Hallelujah, but God told me. And he spoke it to me because he said there's a blessing in the struggle. He said, if you just keep on. But I'm going to tell you something. Now, this is what the Lord gave me. He said, remember that your character should always be stronger than your circumstances. Right. Meaning you can go through a struggle, but you got to keep your integrity. That's right. It don't matter that you're going through. It's all right to go through things in life. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. But you have to remember Hallelujah, that your character should always be stronger than your circumstances. you got to always make sure that God, hallelujah, is there. We can't always control what happens to us, Amen. but we can always control how we respond to it. Amen. And I thank God for that. Yes, Lord. You know, when things happen, how do you respond? Yes. Do you snap? Do you go off? Yes, God. Or do you be quiet and you wait? And you see how you should respond. Yes, Lord. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18, it says, Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. When things happen, do you give him praise in all things? Do you rejoice in your struggle? Amen. Remember that your struggles always lead to strength. Amen. Every difficulty in your life, whether big or small, is something God uses to produce more strength, faith, perseverance in your life. All your pain has a purpose. Glory. Jesus. All your pain has a purpose. I know some people going through some horrendous things. 
I know some people going through, so I, I can't even think about mine. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I rub, spend my time praying, because see, I trust God that he's going to make mine all right. But let me pray for somebody else. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Remember that God's timing is always perfect. Yes. That's the thing. We can't wait on God. We're trying to help God out. Mm. We're trying to hurry God. Yes. And you know, we used to sing in the, in, 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 in the old church, you can't hurry God. I don't care how hard you try. You can't hurry God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Boy, and we try. God's plans are almost always different from our plans, but his plans are perfect. Have the patience to wait on his timing instead of forcing your own. And y'all know it's my favorite scripture. <laughs> Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. God has a plan for you. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And remember that God will never leave you in the struggle. Glory. He'll never leave you. Amen. He's right there with you every step of the way. Yes. If you're speaking God's word. If you're taking God with you every yes. day, yes. if you're walking in the spirit, yes. he's not going to leave you yes. in that struggle. Praise God. Yes. See, the enemy would have you to think, well, this is happening and I don't know. And, 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 and what about this? And what about that? And, and, and then you get all that stuff on your mind. You start trying to figure this thing out. You cannot figure out the struggle. When they was going around that mountain, all they could think about was what they had in Egypt. And they had prayed for how many years to come out of Egypt? And then when they started going around the mountain, hallelujah, they was getting bread manna from heaven every day. But they was yet complaining. Amen. They was yet telling God what they didn't have. Praise yes. God. Amen. Hallelujah. God knows. Glory. Deuteronomy 31 and 6. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. That's good. That's good. He will never leave you nor forsake you. See, that's one thing I know. Let me tell you something. I don't know why I threw this in here. But this is the thing that just really gets me sometimes when you're going through a struggle. You have to deal with people. And you have to go along in life. And you have colleagues, co-workers, and things you're dealing with. But some people can be so negative. And they can be speaking. And you be saying, Lord, how do they know? And it seems like God done sent them to you to tell you something about your situation, but it ain't coming out quite right. Mm. But see, you can't listen to people. You can't listen to the negativity. You can't listen, you can't even let your own mind, you can't even let your own heart start speaking doubt in your struggle. Mm. Amen. You can't even do that. Thank you, Ephesians 1, 3 says, all praise to God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm because we are united with Christ. Amen. Amen. We already got spiritual blessings. If we begin, we always got something to thank God for. Praise God. Yes. I'm not going to be before you long, but I just came to tell you this morning that God says a blessing in your struggle. Yes, Praise God. God. Yes, God. So, so I don't know what your struggle is. I don't know what you're dealing with this morning. I don't know what you need God to do. Hallelujah. But I'm going to tell you, if you keep on doing, hallelujah, just speaking the word and praying, you're going to see God move in that area. Yes, Let's God. go to Genesis 32. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 32. Yes, and you know, I know that this brother, uh, Jacob, I know he struggled, hallelujah, 
with God. He wrestled with some things and, 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 and praise God. So we just want to, hallelujah, be mindful that as we go through the struggle. And I want to uh, make these points, praise God, real quick. Because I tell you, when we're going through things, then we start, we start going through this thing that the world go through. It said, whatever makes me happy must be right. But whatever makes me unhappy must be wrong. Let me tell you something. When you're serving God, hallelujah, all the time it ain't going to make you feel good because God is doing what? He's doing work on the inside of you. Yeah. He's trying to He's trying to mold you. He's trying to put you on a potter's wheel. He's trying to bring you up to something. Praise God. Amen. So it's not going to always feel good. It's not going to always be comfortable. Praise God. Another thing is discomfort and delay and risk and suffering and inconveniences and obstacles can't be God's will. I, mean, I, I, I just told y'all this. Sometimes you're going to run into some challenges. Sometimes you, you, you may not have done nothing, brother and mother, isn't that right? But you're going to run into some things, praise God. Amen. And you might be going to say, God, okay, but you know what? It, it, things still going to happen, but you got to know, praise God, that's okay. God going to bless me in this thing. Hallelujah. Amen. No matter what happens, praise God. Amen. Without knowing it, we began to worship false gods. Now, let me tell y'all something. I'll tell you what a false god is, too. Y'all okay. know we get so comfortable. We get so comfortable with things. Oh, yeah. And that's a god of comfort. You know what? God don't never, if you get too comfortable with God, I ain't never know. I've been serving God a long time. I ain't never know God to lead nobody to be comfortable all the time. He'll stir you up. He'll shake you up. He'll tell you, you know, you get so like, what's going on? You know, uh, you know, you, I can't figure it out. Lord, I, it's because you need to seek God. You need to go to God. Praise God. Let me tell you what another God is. That, uh, of course, we know about, you know, I love God. God wants us to have prosperity. He wants us to have money. But we're not supposed to serve that. Praise God. We're not supposed to pursue Hallelujah, money, like that's the hallelujah, like if we just get enough money, because let me tell you something, somebody can come in here and give you a billion dollars, mm -hmm. praise God, right now, and if your heart and your mind, your soul, your spirit ain't right, it's not going to bless you. Oh, no. Hallelujah, and then let's talk about that God of pleasure, where you just feel like, well, I just, need, I just need to have fun, I just need to have a little bit of joy, I just need to do a little bit of something. That, that's, a, that's another God. Praise God. Okay. Those things can't, those things keep you away from God. Thank you, Lord. Now let me go on to Genesis. We all there. Genesis chapter 32. Amen. And he rose up, starting at verse 22. And he rose up that night and took his two wives and his two servants and his eleven sons and passed over hallelujah the Thank you, Lord. The four Jabok. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent them over that he had. And Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow in his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaking. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince thou hast power with God and with men and hast prevailed. Now see, Jacob got blessed right there. Glory. And Jacob asked him and said, tell me, I pray thee thy name. And he said, Wherefore it is, it is that thou dost ask after my name. And he blessed him there. In the process, Jacob, hallelujah, he got blessed. And, 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 and changed Jacob's name to Israel. And, uh, how many, and, and this is the thing, he wrestled, he struggled with things. Sometimes in our life we wrestle with things yes, and we yes. struggle with them. And, uh, but what was important in the occlusion of the scene, Jacob was struggling with God over all the things that had happened in his life. So, hallelujah.
Hallelujah. So it was this place that we learned that in Jacob's life, you know, it was never meant to be easy. This is especially true when we take it upon ourselves to wrestle with God Amen. and his will for our lives. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We also learned that Christians, despite our trials and tribulations and our strivings in this life, are never devoid of God's presence and his blessings. Praise God. One thing about Jacob, uh, thank you, Lord. I want to bring out this point. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus, because this is important. Praise God. Y'all just raise a hand and bless the Lord. Amen, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. As Jacob wrestled with God at Jacob, that dark night reminds us of truth. Though we may fight God and his will for us in truth, God is so very good. As a believer in Christ, we may well struggle with him through the loneliness of night, but the daybreak, his blessings will come. Okay. Somebody, and I'm receiving this for myself, there's a blessing in the struggle. When Jacob got done wrestling and struggling and trying to figure out this thing with, with the angel, he got blessed. Amen. And see, we're wrestling, we stand up, we're trying to figure things out, we're trying to strategize, we're trying to do all these things. But after he got done, God has an answer for you. Amen. After Jacob did all that wrestling and after all that struggling, there came a blessing. Amen. Amen. You know, and, and, and this is the thing. God want to bless us today. I don't, I, I don't know. I, I, I want to go on from here, but I just keep. Y'all just lift your hands up. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Lord God. Yes, Lord. I just feel like somebody's struggling. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Somebody's in a fight. Amen. Yes, God. I just feel hundred a little Somebody feel like they really not blessed. Amen. Amen. Hundred a little And I feel like they just been wrestling, and you've been yeah, wrestling, and you just been going through some things, yeah, and you no, no, and you've been no, no, trying no. to figure this thing out. And it was just Thank like Jacob God. when he had to wrestle. He struggled. Thank you, Lord. He was struggling with that thing all night long. But see, I hear the Lord saying, I'm getting ready to bless you. Thank you, Lord. He said, I'm getting ready to bless you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. See, when, see, Jacob wouldn't let go. See, some of y'all trying to hang on to God. And y'all keep saying, Lord, how much longer can I hold on? And you keep saying, well, God, I'm doing all I know to do. And Jacob knew he hadn't did everything right. Jacob knew he hadn't been perfect. He knew in everything he hadn't been right. But Jacob knew, say, God, if you don't bless me, Lord, if you don't help me here, I can't go on and face everything. Hallelujah, God saying, I'm blessing you now. I'm releasing the blessing in your struggle now, yes, says God. Yes, God. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that your blessings are released upon the people here, Lord God. Lord, in their homes, Lord God. On their jobs, Lord God. Lord, to all that they stand in for, Lord, you know their hearts, Lord God. Hey, God. Hallelujah. Hey, God. Y'all come on now. I'm trying to move on, God. I'm not done yet. Hallelujah, but I feel somebody need to get blessed. I feel like somebody know I got a blessing and it just ain't coming through and I don't know why because I'm in this struggle. But God, you've been wrestling, you've been praying, you've been reading your word. God said, now, Daybreak cometh. 
Now daybreak comes. Now I'm going to bless you. Now I'm going to bless you. For the daybreak is in your life. Hey God. Hallelujah. Oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now let me tell you something. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Walk. Mm -hmm. Thank you and praising God. Mm -hmm. Like you already got your blessing. Hallelujah. I feel something break in the spirit. Thank you, Lord. I felt something break in the spirit. Hallelujah. Thank right you. there in Jesus' name. But you know what? I love what Paul said in Romans chapter 8. Because mm. see, this is the thing. When you get in your struggle, let me tell you something. People start telling you, you've been going through that too long. Oh, that season too long. And they try to start trying to pull you with everything. But, he, but Paul said, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? Y'all know y'all get tired of going through. And y'all say, let me do this and let me do that. You get tired. He said, a distress, persecution, famine, a nakedness, pearl, a sword. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that love us. Yes. Let me tell you something in the struggle. Don't turn around. Hallelujah. In, 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 in the struggle, praise God. Hallelujah. Don't turn around. Amen. You know, I, I, it, 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 it was something I was so uh, down in my, in my body. And uh, pastor asked me something. And I said, and you know, and I knew it had to come from God because it keep coming back to me. And, and you know, this is the thing. Sometimes we want to move. Hallelujah. Because we want to do it so bad. And it may not yet be God's time. But then sometimes we just got to stay right there. Because see, as soon as we move, then the blessing going to come right there. And then you get moved over there or over there. And so we just got to be careful. This is a time and a season that we got to be mindful. We got to be mindful to hear what God is saying to you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. You were designed. For heaven and not for this world. You are kingdom people, Pastor, been preaching that. You are kingdom people. Let me tell you some people are looking for perfection. They're looking for perfect everything. They want a perfect husband. They want a perfect wife. They want to drive the perfect car. They want the perfect home. They want everything perfect. But let me tell you something. There's none perfect but Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank God for what you have. Jesus. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, Amen. and all these things will be added unto you. Let me tell you something. People that are talking and saying things, let me tell you, the Bible says every knee shall bow. Amen. Hallelujah. Of those in heaven and those on the earth and those under the earth. Everybody got to know that Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen. Don't you let folk fool you. Don't you let people start telling you different stuff and telling you the things like that. Let me tell you something. You better thank God that you know Jesus. Amen. Amen. Because one day he said, every knee going to bow. Every knee going to bow that he's Lord of Lord and King of Kings. He reigns under the Lord of Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Psalms 34, 19, I'm trying to close. It said, many hardships. And perplexing circumstances confront the righteous. But the Lord rescues him from them all. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you believe he rescued you? Amen. Do you believe that he delivered you out of them all? Thank you, Lord. you know what? Your foot could have slipped. Things you could have went down the highway. It could have been worse. Yes. Praise God. But there's a blessing. I believe the blessing has already been released this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let me tell you something. God is just telling me that he has supreme power and he has positioned us 
And he want to be God in our heart. I don't care. I'm not, I'm Pastor Darlene. I'm talking to everybody. We need to make God supreme in our heart. Amen. Let me tell you something. God not going to force you to do anything. He's not that kind of God. When somebody kidnap you, they got power over you, right? Right, right. But when you go with somebody willingly, that's just because they love you and that's just on that basis alone. That's just, you know, they, 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 they just go on, go on with you <clears throat> and because of the love. But when somebody kidnaps you, you don't have power. God wants you to come because he loves you. He want to have supreme position in your heart over all things. Amen. Because see, in this struggle, you can't let nothing pull you. You can't let nothing take you away because it's time. Hallelujah. For God to pour out the blessings. Can we all stand? Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Father God, I thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for your people today, Lord yes, God. Yes, Father. Lord, I give you all the glory, God. Mm. Lord, you spoke to me, Lord God, and you said yes, God. there is a blessing in the struggle. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you that each and every heart, Lord God, yes, God. continue through the struggle, Lord God. Yes, God. Lord God, I thank you that they keep their integrity, Lord God. Lord God. That they keep their salvation, Lord yes, God. God. I thank you, Lord God, Lord, that the Lord, blessings, Lord, Lord God, Lord, of Lord. heaven or have been released upon them today. You, that today they break it in their life, oh, Lord God. Glory. I thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Lord, that they are blessed, Lord God. Mm. Lord, I thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord, we repent, God. Lord, we repent, Lord God. Thank if you, we Lord. have put anything above you, Lord God. Mm. But, Lord, we want you to be Lord of our hearts, Thank you. Lord of our lives, Lord God. And, Lord, we give everything to you, Lord God, you, to work it out according to your perfect will mm -hmm. and your perfect plan, Lord God. And we thank you, Father, and we give you praise, and we give you glory. Lord, make us hush, Shabbat. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, we want to be just like you, mm -hmm. Jesus. Oh, I... Let us, oh God, I just feel like God's speaking to somebody. Y'all put your hands up. I don't want everybody to just put your hands up. Help those, put your, put your hands in. You may not even feel like it's for you. Hallelujah. And just ask God to come in again. Thank you, Lord. And make you whole. Yes, God. Yes, Come God. in again and take control, Lord. Yes, God. Lord, let your blood cover each heart, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Cover them, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Cover their going in and they going Thank out, God. God. Let your blood cover, God. Hallelujah. Lord, the usher by your little ocean. Lord, we rebuke all doubt and unbelief, Lord, Lord God. But Lord, we thank you for favor, Lord God. Your grace and your mercy covers them, Lord God. Mm. We thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, for the blessing, Lord God. Lord God, it is not a dwelling, Lord, thank God. You, Lord God. Lord, that we receive now in Jesus' name. Oh, we give you praise, God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. we give you praise. Hallelujah. You, we Lord. give you praise, God. For there is none like you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God. Bless you Father. Bless, bless you. you Father. Hallelujah. Can I hear somebody say hallelujah. 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 Hey God. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hey God. Amen. 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 Hey God is a good God. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Father. Thank you for your people, Lord God. Thank you for blessing their hearts. Thank you for blessing their homes, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, God, for moving forward like you never have before, Lord God. I thank you for the right now blessing, God. I thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name, we give you the glory. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Word. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm so thankful to God. Hallelujah. For speaking to us this morning in our struggles. Amen. Thank you, because we all have struggles. But the clear, the clear point, the clear revelation is that there is a blessing in the struggle. We know Jacob's life, Pastor was saying, Jacob's life wasn't always right. You know, he was a trickster. He did things. And, you know, sometimes, you know, we all have to pay for our mistakes. Amen. And so sometimes things are brought up on us because of those mistakes. But when we get them paid off, amen, Thank you, Jesus. then there's a blessing because God has to purge us and put us on the potter's wheel so that we can take care of those things and then he can bless us and raise us up. Thank you. So we have to remember, amen, yes. hallelujah, how and why we're going through the struggle. But this, there's a blessing in it because he's purging us, amen. He's making us whole. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful for that. A lot of us, we'd be thinking, well, oh, man, my struggle is, oh, pastor, you just will not believe my struggle is so horrendous. Oh, I'd rather be like uh, Mayweather, perhaps. Hallelujah. His struggle seems to be easy, but I'm here to tell you his struggle is yet to come because he's got to decide what he's going to do now that he's retired. And if you understand someone who's done what he's done all of his life, what is he going to do now? Hallelujah. So that's going to be on his heart and mind so that you may not be able to handle that struggle. But God has placed it on his heart and on his mind to do so. So we all have struggles. And, you know, just because... And a lot of times, you know, the Bible tells us about that we should not condemn nor judge. Amen. And you know what the, 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 the point about that and what the revelation I got, what passed when she was preaching that message about there's a blessing in the struggle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should not condemn or judge anyone. But you know where our problem is? We're condemning and judging ourselves. Amen. And our struggle, and that's keeping us from succeeding and coming out of the struggle. Yeah. We're not letting it go. We're not, as she was saying, giving it to God. We're too busy judging and condemning ourselves. God has let it go. You need to let it go and start moving forward in him and believing and trusting that he's going to bring you out and above your situation and don't be looking back at your past mistakes Glory. and start judging yourself because of that. Uh, amen. amen, hallelujah. Enough said. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We just bless the Lord. Somebody needed to hear that. Amen. Because that goes right along with what she just brought to us. 